Welcome to the Inside Job Boards and Recruitment Marketplaces podcast. I'm Steven Rothberg, the founder of College Recruiter Job Search Site. At College Recruiter, we believe that every student and recent grad deserves a great career. And I'm Peter Zolman, founding principal of the AIM Group, the leading global business intelligence service for marketplaces and classified advertising companies. We consult with recruitment marketplaces companies and publish AIM Group recruitment intelligence and a free weekly digest. We also host the annual Global RecBuzz Conference. This is the podcast for you to learn more about how to create, manage, and work with general, niche, and aggregator job boards and recruitment marketplaces. Hey, Peter. Well, uh, I guess given that we're together again, it may, must mean that another week has gone by. I, I, I certainly look older. Do you feel older? Uh, I, I feel especially older having gone through the uh, Hurricane Ian in Orlando uh, back then. Man, that was ugly, 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 yeah. ugly. I've covered a number of hurricanes, but this one was the worst I've ever gone through. Yeah, from what I've when I heard that uh, your wife was telling you to get the alligator and everything else out of your house, and what she really meant was her husband. But uh... hey, uh, <laughs> no alligators in the house, but there were sharks swimming through the neighborhoods in Fort Myers, and uh, alligators in the streets even near here. But that's not uncommon. The alligator part is not terribly uncommon here. Yeah, well, we have them. They taste. They taste like chicken. So, uh, so, so that, I that's haven't awful. had any alligator ever, except the <laughs> one that I had to had to uh, chase around in in the lake down the block from my house for two weeks, um, probably ten years ago. Long story. Save it for another time. Reason number hundred and twelve. I, I don't live in Florida. So yeah, you live um, in Minnesota. Uh, correct. When you when you when you go there and from like. October to May or even June sometimes yep. you, you're liable to have a blizzard. So I'll take Florida hurricanes and all. Yeah. And, and, and the blizzard, not the fun kind of blizzard. Like you get a dairy queen. It's, it's, it's the blizzard no. that comes from the sky. I, I lived in Buffalo for five and a half years and I went through two hundred year blizzards in five years in Buffalo. It was nasty. It was not nasty like this hurricane was, but nasty in a different way. Anyway. So I know that uh, AIM Group is following a bunch of stories in the recruitment space, and, and one in particular is, is a sad one. Um, and I thought maybe we could talk about that for, for a couple of minutes. Yep. Uh, John Zapp, who many people in the job board recruitment marketplace community know uh, from his work with the AIM Group. He worked with us for three years and 2004 to 2007, and then came back last year. Uh, he worked for ERE.net for 12 years uh, and Talent, TLNT. Uh, he passed away in late September. He was a good friend of both of ours. I knew him for about 35 years. Um, great guy, uh, excellent reporter, nominated twice for a Pulitzer Prize, um, and just an all around super nice guy. Um, challenging at times and did not suffer fools <laughs> gladly and could be, could be very, could be very difficult. Uh, people have said the same thing about me, frankly, but, uh, <laughs> happily I'm not, um, you know, I'm not in the same cir circumstances, but John, John got a brain tumor about a year ago and, um, it was downhill fairly quickly. It was very sad. Yeah. I had the pleasure of talking with him a number of times, um, mostly work related a couple times, just shooting the shit, like a couple of, couple of friends. Um, I think in person once or twice and the way you're describing him is exactly right. He, he could smell bullshit from a mile away. And if he asked you a question and you gave him an answer and if it, if it wasn't the whole truth, he knew it and, and he was going to dig in, um, and I heard the same thing from a number of other people that he talked with, that he had a, a fantastic way of pulling out the information that he was looking for and yet also being more than happy to, to be corrected. Like if, his, if he thought something was one thing, but it actually proved to be another, he loved to learn. And uh, that it was, he was, he, um, 
He's somebody that we'll miss. Yep. So in memory of John Zapp. Yeah, absolutely. Well, why don't uh, why don't we get on to the topic for today's episode? We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Sonic Jobs. Uh, today's guest is Manjinder Sangha. She's the head of product uh, for the UK-based aggregator uh, Sonic Jobs. And uh, she's had quite an interesting journey. She's worked in design technology education for, for 15 years, which is cool because she's only 17, um, and headed an ed tech startup for another six years. And uh, one of the things that she told me before we jumped on was that a common thread through her different roles is that they've all allowed her to act on her passion to improve, I love this, to improve and impact the life chances of others through her work. And I can't think of too many things that are more honorable. So Manjinder, welcome to the Inside Job Boards and Recruitment Marketplaces podcast. Thank you, Stephen. Delighted to be here. Hi, Peter. Thank you for coming along for a few minutes with us. Sorry to regale you with stories of John Zapp, but on the other hand, we're not sorry at all. We're just sorry he passed on. It is good to have you. Mikhail Raja, the CEO of Sonic Jobs, spoke at the RecBuzz Amsterdam conference in September about why Sonic Jobs refuses to run ads with redirection to other job boards or even redirection to an ATS. Can you explain why and give us some your feelings about that? Yes, absolutely. So um, no redirection is is one of our philosophies that we that we run with at uh, Sonic Jobs, and it's uh, it's 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 almost a, a bit like our UPS as well, because um, really, who likes being redirected? You know, like we can talk about you know specific to jobs or any industry. Who likes to click on a button and get sent somewhere else? I think there's that that basic. Uh, human and psychological trend that we 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 all expect things in in the jobs industry in any industry in technology to be done immediately and we've got this expectation which is growing uh more and more with you know the ch- the children that are growing up but also as we use technology in in, in all of our uh, areas of life and i think that's where the new, no redirection comes from because nobody wants to click on a button and be sent somewhere else and that's and that's the truth from a blue collar candidate or a white collar candidate. It's it's actually true across sort of um, generally. That's that's really it's really awesome. And and for you know what struck me at at the Rec Buzz conference, there was a question from the audience um, to your CEO, and it was kind of a well, you know, sounds nice not to redirect. I don't really believe you. I mean, my words, not not the actual question, but it was kind of like really. Do you really not? And, the, and the, the person in the audience basically said something like, well, but what if a customer comes to you and says, hey, we're going to pay you all this money, but we need you to send those candidates to our ATS. And your CEO's response was no. Um, talk with us about that because, I mean, without naming names of customers, you must have had a number of occasions where it's like there's a pot of gold there and it's, guys, do we really mean this? I think there's two, there's two things there, really. You know, the fact that we we really do not redirect. We do uh, that is an absolute um, certainty within Sonic Jobs. We actually try our best to ensure that our candidate experience um, is so smooth and so seamless that we're not repeating questions. We're trying to get relevant information to the candidate, get relevant answers back from the candidate without any redirection. And as for partners joining us, I think that the stats speak for themselves. I think the the, the industry stat of clicks to conversion to application is around 4%, whereas we convert at around seven times higher. So um, obviously the, 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 the candidate experience there is working. Um, and as uh, you know, we've got other things that keep people on, do, it, it's not just about keeping people on our website as well. So we've got uh, something called Apply Anywhere coming out uh, recently and also our Easy Apply integrations where we are not deliberately trying to keep everybody on our site, but we are actually trying to keep them where they are because it's actually about, if we, you know, if we go back to the point that you made about sort of impacting people's lives and giving them greater chances, we can only do that by making the candidate's life simpler, not the employer's really, or not ours. 
And the the apply anywhere. Tell us about that because if I remember from the RecBuzz conference, that's an opportunity to partner with other job boards. Yes, absolutely. So um, when we partner with other job boards, there is a simple integration that they can make, and our chatbot and our candidate experience is it comes up in a pop up onto their website. So they click on the apply button, they get our application process being on their website. The candidate applies, we get that information, we make that application for them. They're still on your site they can continue to browse jobs. We'll be back right after this break. Imagine how fast we could solve the world's biggest problems if more SaaS startups would gain traction sooner. Welcome to the Tech Entrepreneur on a Mission podcast. This podcast is dedicated to sharing experiences from B2B SaaS CEOs who are going above and beyond to deliver change that is noticed. You will hear their secrets and learn what is required to build a SaaS business that the world starts talking about and keeps talking about, and how to overcome the roadblocks to do so. Welcome back to the Inside Job Boards and Recruitment Marketplaces podcast. This is one that we didn't talk about before, but I'm sure you can speak to it. Candidate experience is really rough for most people. The black hole, the apply and fill out the same information I've filled out 75 times before, the uh, get an auto reply from the company saying, we've received your application and we'll be back in touch. And then you never hear anything again. Do you have any thoughts about that? Do you have any ways that any recruitment site can improve the candidate experience? Ultimately, it comes down to the customer, the employer, but there are ways you can uh, work on it. So tell us about that. Absolutely. It's, it's actually a, a lot of the work that I do is actually engaging with our candidates, understanding the sector and the actual candidate in themselves, what they're feeling, how they want to interact with um, any platform, not just ours, we you know we do comparisons across uh, a number of different platforms as well. Um, you spoke about sort of you know the repetitive nature of going onto different websites, adding in that same information with the apply anywhere and easy apply integrations that I was speaking about. That's something that we stop as well, and also our technology is quite sophisticated. So once you have actually um, put in your information and created a profile with us dependent on the job we will only ask you the specific questions for that job not everything that we might need to know for every job that we've got um or that might be relevant to you it's it's about the specific one that you're applying for so that it that our database it remembers who you are and it actually tailors the experience to towards the towards the candidate and also i think there's, there's, you know, especially in our industry. So we work with the blue collar jobs industry. So we, you've got a number of different types of blue collar jobs as well. A cleaner does not want to be asked the same questions as a finance assistant. Yet they all fall into the same category. So we are also sort of working on that whole dynamic, you know, um, um, dynamic uh, CV creation, dynamic questioning uh, of specific custom questions for specific jobs as well but i think i think that's that's what impacts the conversion really because we are actually listening and really trying to get to the heart of the issues for the candidate you, you mentioned a, a, a minute ago that it's a lot uh, it's a big part of your job is is that candidate experience so maybe we can dig into your job for a second um your job title is head of product which a lot of larger job boards will have, but that's probably a job that is a mystery to smaller job boards or those that are really maybe growing rapidly, maybe very driven by the founder. Um, so what does it mean to be a head of product? And I guess related to that, how does Sonic Jobs make, de Sonic Jobs make decisions about its product? Okay, so basically the head of product is is almost like the go-between, <laughs> which is not, not making it sound very glamorous, but the go-between and the person who's connecting sort of the technology to the company vision to the candidate experience as well. So they, they are 
there are lots of companies that are driven specifically by the CEO or by the technology. We try to basically create a balance. And I think that's every product manager's job as well, is to create that balance of what the company needs to grow, but also what is good for our customers and our different stakeholders, and also what technology and innovation is out there as well. And it's and, and it really is creating that balancing act and prioritization is a big part of it into, because we'd all love to do absolutely everything. There's only so much time and money to do to, 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 uh, to actually execute on certain things. And it's really important for a product manager to to actually take um, the when I say customer, I mean, candidate. Uh, we are a customer focused business. And I think that's one of the things that a product manager, you know, you need to be a customer driven business because if you don't have the candidates, you won't have the employers, you won't have the job boards trying to integrate you with you. So we've got to really always focus on the the customer as well. But at the same time, if we didn't have the technology in place, we wouldn't be able to do that. And if we didn't have the commercial reasons and the commercial problems, we, we, you know, so again, it, it is that balance, but we are. For Sonic Jobs, we are super customer focused as well. We're going to give you the rare opportunity. We don't usually do this, but we're going to give you the rare opportunity. Give us the one minute Sonic Jobs um, commercial. Tell us about Sonic Jobs because people may not know your 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 ge geographics, your demographics, how long ago it was founded, and that sort of thing. And I've got the I've got my eyes on the I've got my eyes on the timer, so you get one minute. <laughs> oh, lovely! Okay, uh, Sonic Job. I haven't actually practiced this at all, but uh, let's go. Uh, Sonic Jobs was founded in 2017 by Mikhail Raja, and we have two of the co-founders. We started off as an app in the hospitality and catering industry. We have now got a focus on the blue collar industry. We convert at seven times higher conversion than other job boards. We are super customer focused, uh, trying to make sure that the candidate experience is seamless and intuitive so that applications can be made and opportunities can be created for the blue collar industry. Um, uh, we operate in <laughs> the UK and the US. Uh, we've got over two million candidates uh, who use uh, Sonic Jobs, we've got over a million jobs in the US, which we've just launched uh, in the six, last six months. Um, God, am I out of time yet? <laughs> no, that's perfect. That was one minute awesome. exactly. So that was great. Um, and you and you live in the Midlands or north of, north of the Midlands in uh, the UK? Yes. Yes, I'm based in Shropshire. And, and Mikhail is in London or is he also in your neighborhood? No, no, Mikhil, we've got a very diverse team. So Mikhil is in London, but obviously travels um, of, to the US and UK at different times and he's all over the place, but predominantly based in London. And one of our co-founders is in Sardinia. We have a lot of tech uh, of, of our tech team in Sardinia. I was actually there a few weeks ago as well, beautiful place. We have some tech uh, developers in India as well, and then we have a a variety of people in in the UK. And how many people about does it, do you have working for uh, Sonic Jobs? Around twenty five. The the million jobs in the US in the last six months is a is a substantial number. And given that you're not doing any redirects, that you know your your pie is smaller than than a lot of other job boards, and yet you've you've captured a fair amount of that. Are all of those jobs paid? Or are some of them organic? Are you are you scraping jobs, running jobs like without um, the employer's permission in order to to beef up the database? Or are they all coming to you paid? Um, so my understanding is that they all come to us paid, um, and, and we're not just sort of aggregating them. We're obviously working with a number of different partners at the moment. Our key focus has been uh, sort of growing this market as well. Wow, that's fantastic. Any uh, parting words, any last thoughts about uh, the, the job board business, the apps, the recruitment field in general that you want to share with us? So I'm actually quite new to the job boards industry. And um, as, as you mentioned before, my background has been in teaching uh, technology and product design and then sort of working in the vocational uh, sector. And I suppose that's where um, 
my passion has always been. But I find it quite interesting um, to look across job boards and look at and I look at a lot of other products in technology as well. And I think sometimes the job boards um, and the industry itself sort of it, it looks quite self-contained. Uh, whereas one of the things that Sonic Jobs is trying to do is actually look at innovation in different technology spaces um, so that we can make more of an impact in the, in the jobs and recruitment industry. We tend to forget in all of the KPIs and all of the technologies and all of the efforts that we make to improve a little tweak here or a little redirect there or whatever, no redirect there, um, that a job board has a direct, immediate, personal impact on lives. And if somebody comes to Sonic Jobs or any other recruitment site and finds a new job, we have changed their life and their family's life and the company's business. And we tend to forget that because you focus on so many other things that we tend to forget how important it is and how meaningful it is to people who come to whatever site, Sonic Jobs in your case, of course, and find a new job and how much of a change that can make in their lives. So thank you for that. And thank you for being with us. So um, Manjinder, I want to echo what Peter said. We, we put another way, we are in an honorable profession and, and we always need to remember that. Um, for listeners who want to learn more um, or reach you, uh, how, how would you like them to do that? Um, so there's the Sonic Jobs website. Obviously, it's www.sonicjobs.com. And then um, my LinkedIn address, um, I'm sure you, you'll share that on the po podcast. And I'm on Twitter and, uh, and also on Instagram and all the social media channels as well. Awesome. Just don't call you at two in the morning, right? Otherwise, otherwise, yes. happy to talk. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be surprised, Stephen. <laughs> Sometimes I do have calls at two in the morning when I'm speaking to candidates from the US. <laughs> oh, those darn Americans. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. It's been a delight. Inside Job Boards and Recruitment Marketplaces is a co-production of Evergreen Podcasts, College Recruiter, and The AIM Group. Please subscribe for free on your favorite app. Review it, five stars are always nice, and recommend it to a couple of people you know who want to learn more about job boards and recruitment marketplaces. Special thanks to our producer and engineer, Ian Douglas. I'm your host, Peter Zolman of The AIM Group, the leading global consultancy in the field of marketplaces and classified advertising. Find out more about our reports on recruitment marketplaces, job boards, and classifieds including our new Recruitment Marketplaces Annual at aimgroup.com slash reports. I'm your host, Stephen Rothberg of job search site College Recruiter. Each year, we help more than 12 million candidates find great new jobs. Our customers are primarily Fortune 1000 companies, government agencies, and other employers who hire at scale and advertise their jobs with us. You can reach me at stephen at collegerecruiter. Dot com. Hey, podcast listeners. My name is Paul O'Connor, and I'm the host of the Rust Belt Rundown, a show that highlights valuable insights from manufacturing executives and business leaders in Northeast Ohio and beyond. We convene these leaders for candid discussions about business, regional happenings, industry trends, entrepreneurship, and more. With a wide range of guests and topics, there is something for everyone. Listen to Rust Belt Rundown for free on Spotify, Apple, or your favorite podcast app.